Kush's Movie Review. Hey, welcome to Kush's Movie Review. Um, as always, if you are watching the standalone version on the YouTube, uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up button, let us know in the comments what you thought about the review and or the movie itself. <laughs> Appreciate ya. Um, this week's movie review is The Beanie Bubble. Uh, I tried to make up a funny thing about this, but I got nothing. It's a it's a movie about you know, beanie babies. You're I not going to hit the, the ball every time you, you, you step to the plate, sir. That's okay, though. It's okay. You'll, you'll get and the also, next one. You'll get the next one. Every, I don't know how to... I don't know how, do you own an Apple Watch? I'm going to assume you don't. No, I don't own a watch. Uh, oh, it's a good job you was on time. Lucky. Just guessed. You just winged it. No, I look at my phone. It has a clock on it. Oh, I guess. I set an alarm. Um, I have Alexa. But yeah, right every there. every time because we t- we we after 116 episodes, we're pretty pretty good at hitting our our thing. So typically, the movie review is around about an hour into the show. Okay. And so I guess it's, I'm assuming it's like an an hourly thing or something. But every time I hit the jingle, bam 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 bam. My watch goes, and he goes, hey, stand up. You're being lazy. And it's off. Like, oh, no, I'm still got, I'm still got the show to finish. What's the connection to the... Oh, okay. okay. I don't know, maybe because it's like an hour into the show, maybe after sitting down for an hour, my watch goes, you've been sta- sitting mm-hmm. down for too long. Stand up. Get some exercise. Get some steps in. Anyway. No, definitely Google. Um. So, yes. Beanie Babies, Beanie Bubble, uh, a movie about, uh, I'm assuming we've, again, I haven't done much research. I never do. Um, I'm going to assume this movie kind of veers along the same lines of like the Tetris movie and stuff like that, rather than a movie about a bunch of Beanie Babies who have to save the world. You are correct. Yeah. In the same vein of Tetris and Blackberry. And flame and hot and air and the upcoming dumb money, which is about the GameStop stock price. Uh, that went I up. saw a trailer for that. Oh. That, that looks this is a very strange year. It does look interesting. This is a very strange year in cinema, dude, where we're talking about industry specific stuff, specific intellectual property. Um, the beanie bubble is a part of that. It is rated R, it's one hour and 15 minutes. And if you a have a movie about the Beanie Babies is rated R, that's hilarious. I mean, this isn't about the Beanie Babies themselves. It's about the people who made it. And uh, there are three to four people credited with this uh, endeavor. So uh, we got Zach Galifianakis, Ooh. who uh, stars as the, the the name of the company, Ty. There's a Ty Inc. or Ty Dolls or whatever. Like, I, I can't imagine... You wouldn't wander around your house right now and not find like a Thai product, T-Y, in, in the house. Okay. Maybe not necessarily in that room, but, you know, I bet that bet Mrs. Fish has a stuffed animal from Thai. Hmm. Hey. Anyway, not to make Mike more paranoid, but Elizabeth Banks plays Robbie. A woman named Sarah Snook plays Sheila, who would be Thai's would-be fiancé. And then... uh. Geraldine Biswanatha plays Maya, who uh, is most likely responsible for starting the craze. And it wasn't anything like over the top that she did. She was at a uh, industry trade show and the boss came by, Zach Galifianakis, and I'm like, how much business have you done? And she went, I haven't done much business, boss. And he's like, do better. And then some guy came up and she went like, yeah, you know, we got this. And we got that. And then she just pointed to this random pile of animals. It's, you know, it's like 15 animals right there. They're all the same product. And she's like, well, these aren't available anymore. He's like, well, why aren't these available? It was like, they're limited edition. And, and, and despite the fact that they haven't sold out, she goes, they're sold out. And I, I mean, I, I could suppose I could sell you these 15 right here. And that guy goes like, oh, shit, I got to get my hands on these things. And, and that kind of starts the craze. You know, he stocks them in the Midwest. And then moms find them and they're like, these beanie babies are adorable and then they just word of mouth and that's kind of how the the craze started um you are from the uk mike the uk plays a significant role in this story do you have a beanie baby story 
Where like, yeah, my um, friend's sister had like three of them. Yeah, my story Seems goes. Like um, once upon a time, I saw that Beanie Babies were in the stores, and I was like, no, thank you. The end. Hmm. That is a story. It's not a very. Good I, story, I honestly it is a don't. Story. I mean, obviously, this is going back a while when I'm my youth, but uh, I don't ever remember anyone I knew having a beanie baby. But there you go. That's okay. That's okay. Well, let me tell you. I was, why I you was, I was a man, Kush. I was a man. I had I had wrestling action figures. I had Action Man, who was our version of GI Joe, Joe, I guess. Um, no, yeah. and no. and He Man, and 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 guns and. I worked out and uh, I drank scotch because I was a man. Ooh. <laughs> I like that 11 year old Mike is just playing with He Man and drinking scotch. Like, Probably too old to be playing with He Man, but still too young to be drinking scotch. But fuck it. That's, yeah, that's, our, that's our X right there. It's been a tough day at school. Scotch. I'll take it neat, Ma. Fucking fractions. <sighs> Let me tell you why you probably didn't know anybody who had a beanie baby in the UK, despite the UK actually being a very profitable market for the company. Um, again, they started shipping stuff on a limited edition basis. They they embraced that shit wholeheartedly. So, you know, they'd make 100,000 units, but then tell people it was like only 65,000 units. But then the other 35 would actually go to like the United Kingdom. And folks, the community got so, so entangled. The collectors, like, it's also the first days of the internet. So, like, people would be in the chat rooms just talking about Beanie Babies all goddamn day long. Like, I got the purple one. And I got the little frog. And I got the cactus. And, and like, and then someone was like, you need to get these Beanie Babies from the UK. Now it's a UK product. So that means it's extra limited edition, but also like it's. It has a game British holding. accent. So it's very classy. Americans would fly to London, wait for the boxes to open, and then sell the stores out of, of United Kingdom Beanie Babies. Jeez. And then market them on eBay as we bought this Beanie Baby in the UK. Gave me $1,000. The crazy thing is people were giving up a thousand dollars for stupid shit like that so we we, we get into the the hows and the whys uh zach galifianakis is fantastic in this movie um it's the first time i would say he's not playing zach galifianakis mm-hmm. i'm sure he's not played zach galifianakis a few times but you know he did the hangover and then hollywood demanded he play that character not only in just two more hangover sequels but a few more movies and TV series. At least that's my personal opinion. Um, what was the he um, plays a, that road trip movie he did with Robert Downey Jr. where he was the same character? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I know what you're talking about. I don't remember because no one talks about it. Was it like due date? It wasn't was it, was it Robert movie. Downey Jr. supposed to try to get to the due hospital date. or something like that? Due date. Yes, Robert Downey Jr.'s wife is pregnant. She's going into labor. It, it's... It's a remake, an unofficial remake of Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Ah. And it was very obvious, and while they never said, like, you know, we were trying to do an homage to Steve Martin and uh, John Candy. It's, it's, it's that goddamn movie, just not set around the holidays. So, But while it wasn't a terrible movie, it was funny. I saw it at a friend's house. I laughed. Okay. Planes, Trains, and Automobiles was the better movie. So no one talks about it. Um, but again, he's not playing Zach Galifianakis. He's playing this very complicated character. He's insecure, but then he's ballsy and he does shady shit. Um, Elizabeth Banks plays his business partner slash first lover. Like they're they're 50-50. And then he's just like, eh, Elizabeth Banks doesn't need to earn what I'm earning here. I I need I should earn more my goddamn name on that little red tag and so he like makes a shady business deal and cuts her out of everything and um he gets uh engaged to the snare snook character who uh she's a divorcee she has two little children they're both adorable 
and they love everything about Zach Galifianakis's toy company because it's it starts off as stuffed animals, and then Beanie Babies becomes a side project because he's just like he he does his focus research with his girlfriend's children. Like, what do you think about this one? Like, I love it. What do you think of this one? It's stupid looking. Like, all right, well, stupid looking. Ugh. Anyways, this uh this movie was directed by a woman named Kristen Gore. She also had a part to write in it, as well as a uh, Damien Kalau and uh, Zach Bizonette. They all of them have something to do with this. Again, this is a rated R comedy. Yeah, some details might have been stretched just to uh, you know make things a little more dramatic or a little more funny or a little more whatever. But uh, yeah. Uh, apparently, Zach Galifianakis' character is currently serving jail time right now for tax evasion. Oh, and um, so why is it tax everyone evasion? else got rich. It's always tax evasion. Always tax evasion. So, I um, of the other four movies that are out right now, I think this is just below Flame and Hot. Um, I don't know how I keep knocking the Michael Jordan shoe movie down, like yeah, I, I don't know. They're, it's weird that we've had five of these and we have a sixth one coming. So, But uh, the Beanie Bubble, currently available for free with an Apple TV Plus subscription. Three out of five. Three out of five? What? Uh, what it's not what, a terrible runtime. It's an hour, 50 minutes. Like, it's, it's, it's nice and tight. Tight, like a twigger. Um, what other movies could they make? What, what other... St- like toy craze slash video game could they make a movie about now next because you know they're thinking of it you know they're thinking um, of it. the nintendo would be good or or even the the game boy um make the making of masters of the universe would be an interesting film because that was this weird time in history where ronald reagan lifted this law where like programming for children cannot be a commercial oh. and then he lifted this this rule and all of a sudden now there's a toy called masters of the universe and we have created a cartoon to promote the toy um gi joe is a part of this lineage uh but some everything Teenage in the 80s Ninja became Turtles a part of as well ninja turtles was already a thing and Ninja, oh, wait, no, Ninja was... Turtle story would be fascinating. Wasn't okay. that movie first? Mm-mm. No, I'm thinking of Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters Maybe. was a movie first, and then the then the, then the cartoon came afterwards. That's not even correct. Also, what um, Ghostbusters would be a great story. Are you sure? Um, again, motherfucker, I'm positive. So uh, I'm already mentioned in this episode tonight. There's a company called Filmation. They're a children's programming distributor, and in the late '70s, early '80s, they produced a live-action children's show called Ghostbusters, and it, it starred two human beings and a guy in a gorilla outfit. And then they did it. It, it was the worst of sitcoms. And then Ivan Reitman, Dan Aykroyd, uh, blah, 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 blah. They made this movie about a bunch of, uh, you know, blue collar guys who go around and, uh, you know, they rid you of your ghost problems, much like a, much like a pest, pest guy. Well, uh, oh. Wait, 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 wait. Now I remember this right. in this, do- there was a documentary. Fish, you have a question. And they I'm were, sure as far as I'm unaware, they, they were, they were unaware of this Ghostbusters show no they knew because when they, they when they tried to call it ghostbusters they they the legal team said oh fyi there's already something called ghostbusters and so they were I trying to get the name up. ghostbusters but they had to early on film everything twice with ghostbusters and it was like ghost blasters or something like that they were called something like that something like that you've got the you've got the bullet points I've but uh the no, they they knew about this fucking thing and they eventually did get the rights for Ghostbusters from Filmation. Um, then Ghostbusters would become a huge hit. It would become discovered that Columbia Pictures, we now call it Sony. Um, we do. Excuse me. 
they're making a cartoon. Uh, they did not have the rights to the cartoon for Ghostbusters. So Filmation hit the vault real quickly and they made up their own cartoon called Ghostbusters based on that live action show from five to eight years prior. And that forced Columbia Pictures to come up with the real Ghostbusters, which is now its own thing. That would be a fantastic fucking uh, movie. What about my last one? The last one I thought was, wasn't there always like a, some interesting backstory to the, the PlayStation story? Because I've always heard it's yes. someone at Microsoft. Yes, that's been coming up. Microsoft was mm. supposed to be involved in there or something. And then they pulled it out. Or was it Nintendo? Nintendo. 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 Before and... the Nintendo 64, they had a deal with Sony where they were going to come out with the Nintendo PlayStation. And that was going to be the next, their next next gen con for that time and then something stupid happened and they decided to go with like panasonic or magnavox or anyway they they broke their contract with sony and that pissed sony off but then they had all these goddamn playstations and they're just like fuck it sony playstation and they became the dominant playstation uh, video game console yeah now nintendo uh, like for its time we got a switch it's not bad, right? I, on my plane ride to the Netherlands, yeah, I watched a video. Uh, it's from the Crackle service, but it was on the airplane. And five hours of uh, the backstory of Nintendo. Nintendo used to be Ooh. a playing card company in the 19th century. Just the facts, ma'am. Yeah, he was a little bit late on that one, late from Jesus. That's we made a dramatic pause, but anyway. Um, all right, well, what was we talking about? Um, I guess there, yeah, the beanie bubble, beanie bubble. Um, three out of five, three out of five. It's fine, check it out if you have the Apple service. Check it out. It's, it's uh, again, it's a nice tight run time for what it is. It's doing the thing where we're telling this thing from three different perspectives, they they weave it in and out as they do. It is funny at points, and then also just like, wow, this was a time in our life where these little stuffed animals were worth thousands of dollars and now they're not worth anything maybe just check it out to see zach Galapagos is being different interesting check he does out. really good in this award worthy i don't know about that but it was nice to see him play someone different or you can just go on youtube and search between two ferns that's always funny as well he's that still get zach Galapagos in that show i oh, know this guy is very good i enjoy him i enjoy him it, it, it merges my two favorite things comedy and shrubbery that's all folks <laughs>